So before we get started on our next talk, we have a couple of announcements. So today is the last day of DEF CON, and the closing ceremony is at 3.30 p.m. on the top of the mountain, followed by an after party on the Shiva Lounge. And also, the entire venue will be open on Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for co-working for anyone who has a DEF CON wristband. Uh, but please join me in welcoming our next speaker, who is going to be talking about growing the global Ethereum community through localization. We're going to be joined by Luca, who is on the translation team for ethereum.org and also works on the ecosystem development team at the Ethereum Foundation. Please welcome me in joining Luca. Hello. Um, my name is Luca, and as Madison already mentioned, I work on Ethereum.org, mostly focusing on the translation program. Thanks for coming to this talk. It's um, ha happy to see there's interest in this topic, which is something I feel quite strongly about. Being in South America for this DEF CON, which is amazing, by the way, big shout out to the DEF CON team. Um, yeah. Uh, being in South America for this DEF CON, the topic of providing content in different languages to make Ethereum more accessible and inclusive is even more relevant. This space is highly technical and a lot of the focus and effort is on technical breakthroughs and progress, which makes a lot of sense and is key for the technology to mature and reach its potential. However, with Ethereum as a technology growing and improving, a lot of the focus is and will continue to shift towards other things like education, community building, inclusivity. This talk will touch on all three of those as they're often closely related. Um, Ethereum is a global technology that is inclusive and accessible at its core. However, a lot of the content, including educational content, application front ends, websites, or anything else people use to interact with or learn about Ethereum, is usually not very inclusive and accessible, as it is often only available in English. We will look at some de more detailed stats later, but the main one we should all be aware of is the fact that over 6 billion people in the world do not speak English at all. By only providing content in English and not translating or localizing it for the global community, we are often limiting how inclusive Ethereum is for all of those non-English speakers. Um, my aim is to drive home the importance of this issue and look at some potential solutions that we can use to grow the global Ethereum community by just providing content in the language that they can understand. You can see some stats for uh, languages by the number of native and non-native speakers here. Just two numbers that I'd quickly highlight are over 7,000 languages in the world and 10 languages with more than 200 million speakers. So one number that I've already mentioned but it definitely warrants a repeat is the six billion non-English speakers. Um, there's a couple of stats like this that I will repeat throughout the talk because they are significant and important to think about. So, English is the most widely spoken language in the world as a first and second language. It is also the, um, it is also the most learned language in the world as a second language, and yet still only about 17% of the world's population speaks English at all. If we really want to gain worldwide adoption and onboard the next billion people to Ethereum, we need to remove this language barrier and make our websites, documentation, and apps available to everyone. 61% of websites are available in English, but English only reaches about 26% of global internet users. I know we don't like to compare this space with traditional companies or existing tech giants due to different ideologies, goals, and approaches, 
But the fact is that they've all done a great job at gaining worldwide adoption and increasing their total addressable market, including by breaking down language barriers. This list could really go on forever, but I'd just like to highlight a couple of examples. The most popular websites in the world by traffic are Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. They are also available in 150, 80, 46, and 111 languages, respectively. And they all get billions of views. These companies aren't translating all of their content just for the sake of it. Um, they are all aiming to address and be accessible to the global population and realize that by providing their content only in English, they would be limiting their target audience by about 80%. Another example that more people here might relate to is Wikipedia, which doesn't make money from visits and is essentially a public good. While not exactly accurate based on the definition, you could also think of Wikipedia as being open source. Um, it is available in well over 300 languages, simply because its purpose is to be inclusive and accessible, and its target audience is the entire world. An English-only Wikipedia would definitely not be the seventh most visited website in the world. Yesterday, about 48% of all page views on Wikipedia were in English. However, the English version of Wikipedia also has about three times more articles available than most of the other popular languages. So even this 48% number isn't telling the whole story. In fact, Wikipedia gets about seven times more page views in English than in Japanese, but the number of articles available in English is also five times higher than in Japanese. Accessibility and inclusivity also aren't the only aspects we should think about when talking about translations. Another one is efficiency. Understanding basic English is often not enough to be able to read and understand a lot of the content around Ethereum, which can often be quite complex. If you've ever tried to read up on any of the latest developments about Ethereum, you'll find that they're often very complex topics. Um, studies in bilingual countries have consistently shown that people who learn in their native language tend to learn more, perform better on tests, enjoy the experience more, and are less likely to drop out or lose interest in the topic. In fact, a study from CSA Research has shown that 65% of non-native English speakers prefer content in their native language, even if they are highly proficient in English. This doesn't even take into account the complexity of many Ethereum-related topics and content and the new terminology that is often exclusive in this space and the we've basically made up or are keep making up. So maybe you're not bothered by inclusivity but just want to drive traffic to your project, gain users, increase TVL or the number of transactions that your app gets and just want to increase your revenue. In that case, you should still definitely be thinking about translations. Um, again, a lot of chat stats to choose from, I've just identified a couple that I think are pretty telling. From a company perspective, Fortune 500 businesses that invested in translation were one and a half times more likely to observe an increase in revenue. And the second one, Fortune 500 companies were reported to be over two times more likely to improve profits when they invested in translation. If this is true for Fortune 500 companies, which already have massive existing customer bases and product market fit, we can assume that it's even more relevant to a new and upcoming technology and products in this space. And from a user perspective, 75% of consumers are more likely to buy products from websites in their native language. Around 40% of internet users said they will never buy from websites that are not in their native language. And another stat that I've already mentioned but is telling enough is 65% of non-native English speakers prefer content in their native language even though they are highly proficient in English. So almost half of internet users would never buy from websites that are not available in their native language. How about using dApps or depositing their money 
into DeFi, into a DeFi protocol that isn't available in their language? Probably not, right? I hope all of these help get the point across, which is really as simple as we should be translating more content, make it more accessible, reach more people, educate the world about Ethereum and onboard people from all over the world to this space. And if anyone has found themselves thinking that they should be consi start considering translations for their content or level up their translation efforts, um, we'll move on to some concrete ways of how we can solve this. To be honest, addressing this is pretty simple. We need to be aware of why translations are important and basically just start doing it. My main goal is just to highlight the importance of translating content and providing content in different languages, making this space more accessible, onboarding more people to Ethereum. It is up to individual projects, users, people, organizations, websites, and content creators to decide if they want to start translating their content and expand their translation efforts. Going about it is fairly simple. There's many different approaches to take. For example, you could just order translations for your content from a translation agency. Or you could create a translation bounty, translation program, or something else to get the community involved. The quality of machine translation is increasing as well. So post-machine editing is becoming significantly, significantly more used in the translation space, um, where text machine is translated, where text is translated by machine translation and is then reviewed and edited by a professional linguist. Probably not the most applicable to the content in this space, because as we've already mentioned, there's a lot of new terminology and a lot of things that are still very much in the works and keep getting updated and changed. All combinations of, of, the, of the above approaches are possible and many more. And then there's also the review process, quality analysis process. All of these have their advantages and disadvantages, which we don't have time to get into. Um, but you can find more information about all of them online if you're interested. We've also come up with a translation program playbook, which is mostly aimed at Ethereum-related projects and covers some of the basics of translating content. You can find it right here if anyone is interested. Um, hopefully it helps answer a question or two. We created this as a resource based on our experience with translating content on ethereum.org and a couple of other websites. And if you do check it out and have any input or feedback or can think of a way to collaborate with us, even if it's just looking for help translating your content, uh, please reach out to us. I will share a bunch of contact details in a minute. I would also like to mention some of the results that we've seen on ethereum.org by focusing on internationalization. Ethereum.org is an educational resource that covers many different topics, has a lot of resources for beginners to teach them about Ethereum and blockchains, to help them get on board it, to help them identify the right tools to use when they're new to the space. Um, so making it accessible is very important to us. There's also resources for more intermediate and advanced users, community members, developers, basically anyone else. The approach we're taking is very much in line with the open ethos of Ethereum and focus on open source. The website is fully open source and anyone can contribute to the content, features, code, design, and community aspects of it, as well as the translation process. Since the translation program launched in 2019, our community of contributors translating the website has grown to over 4,000. The program represents a simple and low barrier way of getting involved and contributing to Ethereum without needing a lot of technical knowledge and skills. Basically, the main requirement is just being bilingual. These contributors are also the main reason why the website is currently available in 50 languages. For quality assurance purposes, we're also working with a translation agency to make sure that all of the translations get reviewed before being added to the website. So our approach is really a combination of the community-based and professional localization processes. 
While participation in the translation program is voluntary, we do try to acknowledge our contributors as much as possible to the point where some of them have transitioned from joining, contributing to ethereum.org, and are now working full-time in the space or have launched their own initiatives or communities. The ethereum.org translation program is also very much a community building effort, and this aspect is an important part of why the community-based approach to translating website content works for us. Getting involved and contributing to the website is a great way to join the Ethereum community, make an impact, add some value, contribute to Ethereum in some way without needing a lot of technical skills. Um, and it's also an amazing educational experience. We've heard from many of our contributors that the knowledge they've gained about Ethereum by simply helping to translate the website is immense as it allows them to really read through all of the documentation that is available on ethereum.org while also contributing at the same time. Translating content has impacted the website in different ways as well, not just building an amazing community of people who share our passion and goals. Analytics on the website clearly show that the more translated content we have accessible, the more non-English page views we get. Um, the number of non-English page views still depends a lot on the general traffic to the site, but the ratio is going up constantly. In fact, this month has been the 12th straight month where the ratio of non-English versus English page views has gone up and hit a record high, with non-English page views currently representing around 26% of all visits to the website. Over a, traffic, over a quarter of all the traffic to the website is in languages other than English. This chart shows the total page views on ethereum.org in the last couple of years. You can see the total page views on the website, the non-English page views, and the ratio between them. As you can see, regardless of what the general trend is and how many people actually visit the website, page views in other languages continue to trend upwards. Um, and now represent an ever-growing percentage of all visits. In short, the more translated content we have on the site, the more people read content in their native language. The demand is clearly there for multilingual content, and all of us are very well positioned to ensure that Ethereum continues to be as inclusive and accessible as possible. On ethereum.org, we always appreciate feedback, input, new community members, new contributors to the website. Uh, if you have any feedback for us or see a way to collaborate in any way, feel free to send us an email to translations at ethereum.org if it's anything related to translations or to website at ethereum.org um, about anything else, really. You can also stop by our booth on the third floor if you want, should be pointing up, not down. Yeah, um, <laughs> our booth on the third floor, if you want to say hi to the team, get more information about contributing to ethereum.org, give us some feedback, um, collaborate on translations or anything else really. And if you want to talk about translations, feel free to reach out to me or catch me here at DEF CON. I'm always happy to chat. That should be it for the most part. I'm going to be showing a couple, like all of the languages that the website is available in right now. If you want to surf the website in your language. Um, just want to leave you all with a few closing thoughts. Everyone should be very proud of what Ethereum as a technology, all the projects building on top of it, and the Ethereum community have achieved so far. And we can all be even more excited about what the future has in store. There is obviously still a lot of research, development, and building in front of us, but it I think we can all agree that we have a lot of reasons to be optimistic. If there's just one thing that I would like people to take away from this talk, it is the fact that everyone can make an impact and play an important role in the present and future of Ethereum. There are countless ways to get involved and provide value to the ecosystem. And sticking to this topic, this is especially true for making sure that the Ethereum that Ethereum content, websites, interfaces, and communities become increasingly inclusive and accessible to everyone. 
repeating another number that I've already mentioned, only about 17% of the world's population speaks English at all. This doesn't even mean that they are proficient in English, but that they can understand the most basic words and sentences in English. If you're bilingual, translate content, create content in another languages, make videos, podcasts, Twitter spaces, whatever in your language, spread the word and build your local community. If you're a project, protocol, DAP, website, make sure that your content is available in other languages. This is how we reach most of the world's population. Educate them about Ethereum, blockchains, wallet, dApps, DeFi, all of it. This is how we onboard the world to Ethereum. Thank you. Amazing, we have time for a couple of questions. Does anyone have a question for Luca? Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, besides going faster, uh, what do you think are the advantages of a community-based approach to translations? So, we have thought about this a bunch, really. Um, one thing is, that we've seen is a lot of the people have this assumption that you need to be highly technical and have a special skill set to make an impact, to contribute to Ethereum. Um, we feel like the translation program is a good enough proof that that is not the case. Anyone can get involved, anyone can contribute, anyone can make an impact. And like I've said, we've had a lot of people who started contributing to the website, learned enough that, and were exposed to the community enough that this led them to get full-time jobs in the space or create something of their own. It's the translation program in our mind is a great starting point to join, contribute, add value, and then level up doing whatever people want. Hi, Luca. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I actually worked in the AI translation industry before migrating to um, Web3, so this topic is definitely very close to my heart. I actually have two questions. First, you presented the translation playbook, but what are like the efforts uh, from the Interior Foundation on creating a glossary with shared um, terms in the Web3 space. I mean, you mentioned, of course, that like every day we come up with a new technology, with a new term, uh, with a new concept. But I think that having those foundations would be important to also escalate and to also like people create uh, independent initiatives on translating the content. The second one that I wanted to mention, um, translating text, let's say static content, Con uh, content is already challenging enough, but what are the also uh, alternatives, options, or what are like the efforts to also translate videos, infographics, um, any kind of um, dynamic content? Thank you. Thank you. Those are two awesome questions that we've really thought about as well. So the first one is, we have a glossary that we have been building up through well, basically since we started translating ethereum.org. Um, it's not open to everyone, but if you visit the translation program playbook or the translation program page on ethereum.org, there are sections in there that basically say, do you want to use any of our resources? Reach out to us and we will share them. Um, the reason they're not open is because we're using a translation tool that really doesn't make it easy to share the glossary. And also another point on this is there are a lot of independent efforts to create glossaries of terms for specific languages, countries, regions, which I think is what, how it should work. Um, we make a lot of effort to translate the website into as many languages as possible, but not everything is a problem that the Ethereum Foundation should be solving for. If you've listened to any of the talks from any of the people at the EF, there is this philosophy of subtraction, which is pushing power outside and empowering everyone else to do whatever they want to grow Ethereum, and that can mean a lot of things, but that is also Creating glossaries is a good example of that. We are not best equipped to create a glossary for every specific language, 
whereas there are organizations and initiatives in different countries of native language speakers who are far better equipped to do that than us. And your second question was, ah, translating videos, infographics, yes. That's also something, so at some point we started a trial project to translate some videos. It didn't go great. It didn't go as good as we'd hoped. Um, but that's not to say we won't pick it up and try to level it up at some point again. As far as infographics goes, um, there's been some people on our team advocating for creating infographics for the website that are made in a way that they're easy to translate. Also something that is very much in progress, but it is something we are thinking about and want to solve for.